Okay, here, 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 my name is John Green, I'm Director of Services of the Security Policy Council, uh, BDNC, so he is in here this evening. Uh, Mayor, uh, members of Kerry County Council, Chief Executive of Kerry County Council, uh, you're all very welcome uh, to this uh, event here this evening, hosted by Kerry County Council online, and we want to pay a particular welcome to those of the virtual community, whether you're listening to us or whether you are joining us online and seeing the, the occasion here. The background to tonight's event is in the context of giving thanks for all of the work that has been done by people throughout County Kerry in a voluntary uh, capacity since the pandemic visitors here in March of uh, last year. Since that has occurred, there's been tremendous work undertaken by many, many people. And this evening is about Kerry County Council as your democratically elected body, as the local government body here in Kerry, to say thanks to people for what they have done in that regard. Uh, I want to welcome the new virtual community as we have to carry out all of these uh, type of events now in the context of the public current public health guidelines online and very welcome to the virtual community out there. And it is very important to say how very proud we all are of the work that has been undertaken by everybody who's been recognized here tonight and by everybody who's worked very much on behalf of the people of Kerry by the people of Kerry. So I hope you enjoyed the appreciation evening that, that we have uh, put together for you here. And without further ado, uh, I'd like to call on the Mayor of Kerry, uh, Councillor Patrick Connor Scartin, to address you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Ladies and gentlemen, and staff and officials of Kerry County Council, on behalf of Kerry County Council, I would like to welcome you here tonight. As Cahirlik of Kerry County Council, Mayor of Kerry, I am proud to be able to to welcome you to this appreciation event to recognize the work of the Community Response Forum. It is fair to say that at the start of 2020, anybody with a looking glass to predict the future would have declared it defective and thrown it away. We had heard some new reports coming from China about a virus and that it was making appearance in other parts of the globe. But simply put, nobody would have predicted the following 18 months where in many cases, life stopped, society shut down, people were forced from their everyday routines and phrases like lockdown, cocooning, quarantining, and travel restrictions became commonplace. Going shopping, attending a football match, going to mass, a night out with friends, going to a concert, holding a meeting in an office, popping in to say your parents to say hello, and so many other things all stopped frozen in air, while the uncertainty about the future impacted any plans that anyone was trying to make. Simply put, we have been going through a life-changing global event that has simply turned the world on its axis in a way that the majority of us have been fortunate enough never to have experienced. But key to getting through this was how to react, how to make sure our families and friends got through it, and also ensuring that those who were in a vulnerable position were able to reach out and get help where necessary. As a human race, as a county, and as a network of communities across Kerry, we had to adapt on the run as the statutory agencies such as Kerry County Council, the Gardaí and the HSE. Where to start, how to do it, what resources to use. As the speakers this evening will demonstrate, we found a way. The Community Response Forum decided not to reinvent a wheel. They recognised the power of communities, the power of the existing community and voluntary groups, and the champion for them, harnessing those networks and the work they do. And the results bear out for themselves. What was critical right from the start was to establish a simple system 
to have a single point of contact which would allow anybody who needed assistance to be able to ring up and get through to someone. Linked into that, we needed to organise a group of volunteers to safely respond to the needs of the vulnerable. Easy in theory, difficult in practice. There is no doubt that in my time it has proven to be one of the most effective mobilisation of groups and volunteers around the county and has proved to be a model that other counties have copied. More importantly, we now have a model that can be used for other situations where communities need to reach out and seek help. This will be critical into the future. We have strong formal links with community and voluntary groups around the county and a structure that they can operate under. Tonight is just a simple event to recognise the hard work of everybody who was involved in making the Community Response Forum the huge success that it was. We are all acutely aware that we are not there yet, that the road to end to the end of the pandemic is still a while away yet, and there may still be bumps on the road. When that happens, we will hopefully be able to further honour those involved. But to the organisers, the council officials, statutory agencies, the call centre staff, the clubs, groups and organisations, the volunteers and everybody who played their part in this feat of kindness, volunteerism, community spirit, as Cahirlach of Kerry County Council, Mayor of Kerry, I want to express my sincere thanks to you all on behalf of the people of Kerry, on behalf of the communities of Kerry and on behalf of my elected colleagues. Tonight is a celebration of the community spirit that we have in our county. The volunteer groups who have freely given of their time to help their neighbours and communities. But I also want to pay tribute to everyone from state agencies, frontline services, businesses and individuals who dug deep during this time of crisis and together helped make things that little bit easier. I make no apologies for singling out, in particular, the frontline medical staff. Our nurses, our doctors, our consultants, care staff, GPs, all of these were particularly at the front line of the battle to keep COVID at bay in our county and in the trenches in assisting those who were struck down by this deadly virus. I want to pay a special tribute to you and your colleagues who kept our health service operating under such times of pressure. We all, we have all had difficult times. We have missed key events in our lives and in our loved one's lives. We have been apart from friends and family for too long. We have lost loved ones and we have been denied our normal form of grieving. But we are a resilient people. We look forward to the future. Gurdav Mahagat Galeer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cahirnak. Uh, thanks for those introductory words and setting the tone for uh, this evening. I now introduce the Chief Executive of Kerry County Council, uh, Myra Murrell. Thanks, Myra. You're on mute. I think I'm okay now. Hello, everybody. Yeah, I'm okay. Corlore, uh, a gain of Schlegelair, is Desh Hoftoki shot Tronona, the Gakdina Igari, Buikas a Gwal, the Gakdina a Glock Fort, Evragrot and Fobble, or Covid 19. Tonight, just to build on what the, the Kahirika said, I just want to say a few words. And I think it's very important at this point that we mark at this point of the pandemic where we have come from. And when we look back to, to March of, of 2020 and that early early period, I suppose, you know, there were spiralling numbers. Um, there was a high level of vulnerability. There was a, a high level of angst and anxiety out there. And there was really little knowledge of what this was about or what lay ahead. And I suppose in the midst of all that confusion and, and anxiety, the one thing that was held very steady and held very steady right throughout uh, the last nearly year and a half um, has been the County of Kerry and how people have come together. And I've seen it right across the board. And uh, it really is something that has shaped 
our approach to this pandemic. And I think the county and its people are stronger, stronger for that and how that has happened. I have never seen um, a county or any place to come to, together um, as quickly and as swiftly um, and as steadily as what happened here in Kerry. And, you know, I, I know the Cahirlock referenced it, but, you know, the model that was developed here in Kerry became the national model. And I think it informed the national model. And I think that's something we should all be uh, very, very proud of. And I really want to say that the Community Forum has proven itself to be something that we can endure past this pandemic. And as we emerge from this pandemic and as we get into the recovery period from this pandemic, we'll have a lot of hard days ahead. But I think we have a really, really sound uh, and a very strong community model uh, in place. And, you know, we will hear um, some of those from some of those groups tonight. And I think that is, that is hugely uh, important. I think we often hear the words coordination, cooperation and collaboration. And I can say that this those words are often overused, they're often not understood fully, but in this case, they're a real living example of what collaboration, cooperation and coordination can do and how it can mobilise a reaction and how it can mobilise the people to take care of the most vulnerable, whoever they are across a right spectrum of the county uh, and whoever they are. So look, tonight isn't to talk about post-recovery, tonight is to say thank you. And I want to say thank you very much. And Kogor to Kitz Liv Golair, as the Quidibra, Agus Guiam Gakra Ertsa Satauki. So thank you very, very much. Thanks very much, Moira, for, for those words. Uh, and I'd now like to introduce you to my colleague, uh, Mike Scannell. Mike is the Director of Services here in Kerry County Council and Chair of the Kerry Community Response Forum. So uh, I'll hand you over to, to Michael. I suppose tonight's event is called the Community Response Forum Appreciation Event. And I suppose in that context, it's important to put the background to the Community Response Forum. And the idea was a relatively simple one. One which was, I suppose, born out with the wish that the power of the community and voluntary groups operating around Kerry would build on the rich tradition of community engagement and very strong interagency cooperation that is evident in the county. As a local authority, we have been fortunate over the years to see the power of the communities of Kerry in operation. The male concept is very strong in Kerry. And the council has always recognized it and it has worked alongside community and voluntary groups to deliver services throughout the county, to benefit the county and to benefit the council as well. Excuse me, someone tells me my camera isn't showing. My apologies. You might have been better off. <laughs> um, Kerry has a very strong public participation network, which contributes enormously to the activity of the council and wider community. The groups within the county, from the tidy crown, the tidy towns, the local enterprise groups, the chambers of commerce, the men's sheds groups, the environmental groups, and many others have worked in their community, among their community, and for their community. When the COVID-19 pandemic came to our doorstep, as a council, we were keenly aware that the restrictions on travel and on shopping that these would impact on certain sectors of the society. And most importantly, they would impact on the most vulnerable and the most restricted within our communities. The key question for us was how could we help make sure that nobody slipped through the net? And that was the key element. We knew that a lot of people would be in a position to find help, but how would we ensure that nobody fell through the net? And that everyone who needed help was able to access it quickly and safety. 
we looked at what was needed. The services were relatively simple. It was shopping, it was cutting the grass, simple repairs at home, dropping off a newspaper, maybe making sure that someone got a lift to an important appointment. But we needed it to get the widest possible reach throughout the community. I suppose the answer was relatively simple. The community groups and established voluntary groups around the county had the networks in place, knew the people, lived among the communities, and knew how to connect. As the forum, we didn't see our job as replicating that. We knew it was already in place. The community forum saw our job as bringing all these groups together under one umbrella to ensure that from a safety and governance viewpoint, everything was carried out correctly to avoid unnecessary duplication so that we had to maximizing the effort throughout the county. With the help of the various statutory agencies, the HSE, the Gardaí, the Department of Social Protection, TUSLA, with the assistance of the wonderful Kerry Volunteer Centre and the continuous support of the Public Participation Network. The protocols were set up to ensure that everyone from the GA clubs to the Meals and Wheels were operating correctly and in accordance with public health guidelines and that those availing of the service could be confident in its delivery. We set up, as the, the mayor said, a single point of contact and a phone number, text number, and email address to make sure that everyone who got in touch with us was dealt with. In theory, it sounds simple, and I suppose it, at many levels it was simple, but it took a lot of discussion, a lot of hard hours work to get it working smoothly. The effort was worthwhile, and I thank all those involved. I thank Brian Looney for his technical assistance in developing the systems to allow it to happen as well. It was invaluable. Uh, Councillor Cronin will speak later on the staff who mended telephones, but I just must mention it here. It was critical that someone in, in need who picked up the phone had that person at the other end who was answering it. And if they didn't have the answer for them immediately, that they would get back to them within a very short period. And then the next step was to connect them to the, to the group on the forum who would in fact deliver the service for them, the community group on the ground, whether that was GA, the Meals and Wheels or whoever it was. And I suppose the question is, how do we know it worked? Well, we know it worked from the wonderful feedback that came to us throughout the period. People really appreciated it. And we know it worked even more so because the number of calls declined as the relationships were established between those in need and the groups throughout the county. So the less we were needed, the more successful we were in many ways. Lessons learned, plenty. Our next step, as the chief executive has said, is to take these learnings and see how we can apply them going forward in a non-COVID, hopefully, non-emergency, non-pandemic times for the betterment of society, our communities and our county. The forum met today, uh, this morning, on our fortnightly meetings. We've reduced them to fortnightly at this point. And the emerging challenges were discussed at that meeting. And it was agreed that we'd look at those going forward over the coming weeks. Look, I want to give a huge thanks to everyone who played our part. Uh, Aaron Bark Sport, Tommy Plakte, Leve Egover, Mar Irn, Vian Urbershin, Arfud and Kunte, Agus Haring Gaptina, Erin Yanzi, Glass Agus Or, Gurev Mila Mahagiv Kaleer, Slam Gufal. Thanks very much, uh, Michael. Thanks for those uh, those words, and I think they capture certainly the essence of what was done, how it was done, and as you said, the learnings that are coming out of it. And uh, as you say, pulling on the green and gold jersey is something that uh, hopefully we'll see plenty of now over the next few weeks as well on the sporting fields as well. Thanks again, Mike, for that.
Just to outline the, the following format in terms of the appreciation night, uh, we will have a number of speakers along with our Cahir League and representatives from the municipal districts, and we will have various groupings in terms of the acknowledgements that we are doing here tonight. Uh, it's important to highlight that the, those acknowledgements are on a county-wide basis, notwithstanding that we have them grouped and uh, some speakers from the municipal districts uh, to give acknowledgement to the work that has been done. So I'll move on now with the, the first grouping that we have, and uh, I'll introduce the representative from the Ken Mayer Municipal District, uh, Councillor Norma Moriarty, uh, to make the introductions and to speak in terms of the first groupings that we have here tonight. Thanks, Norma. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Cordy um, Galeer. Er son no colour through the county, August Simo County Board of Sock Nadine, is more on a northern, Cogardus, like as boy, as a gual than the groupy show. Ober crew, a villa dena the gak grouper, a concour a hook shave, the rack dinner, Vishiko Hintak, like as muile, boysak, boykos thief. There is no doubt that we have all been through a very difficult time over three months. As elected councillors, our own way of operating had to change significantly from online meetings to consultations with constituents to face masks and hand sanitizer, life is definitely very different for every single one of us over the past year and a half. The four groups that I'm going to uh, pay tribute to this evening are the GA clubs of our county, South Kerry Development Partnership, TUSLA, and the Department of Social Protection. Our GA clubs in Kerry, at the outset in March, 2020, every player, mentor, officer, and club member demonstrated extraordinary determination, resilience and empathy towards others from the onset of this pandemic. While adhering to all the public health guidelines, the clubs embraced the Rapid Community Response Initiative countywide, helping, as always, those most vulnerable in our society. It is very important that we acknowledge and complement this extraordinary demonstration of community volunteerism, which is unparalleled anywhere in the world. Even before the Community Response Forum was formalised, Members of GA clubs around the county were already active in their communities, assisting those in need, bringing shopping to the elderly, assisting with jobs and helping out those who needed help. Then, when the Community Response Forum was being established, the willingness, the willingness of the Kerry County Board and its members and clubs to come in under the umbrella of the forum was critical. The role of the GA as a trusted organisation gave the Community Forum instant acceptance among communities around Kerry. Essentially, they knew and recognised their GEA members. And the feeling was the forum must be a force for good and can be trusted if our local representatives are on it. We must also pay tribute this evening to County Board Chairman, Mr. Tim Murphy, who was with us here tonight, and who at national level carried out significant work to ensure that this local authority-led collaborative model would be accepted as the main scheme in all counties. This significantly reduced the potential impact for competing forums which, while well-meaning, could have resulted in duplication and people slipping through the cracks. In many ways, this pandemic has brought the very best out in so many of this county's clubs and members who mobilised en masse when the need was greatest. South Kerry Development Partnership. SKDP and its staff remained active in the community throughout the pandemic. Like many organisations, a significant amount of the supports were aimed at supporting families and individuals Rural Social Scheme and two supervisors and staff were busy connecting with local pharmacies and supermarkets in early 2020 to deliver food to vulnerable individuals and families throughout South Kerry. They also support, supported the distribution of food that would normally be collected by families from family resource centres and from the KDYS. SKDP staff began and continue to deliver food parcels weekly to families from Marks and Spencers, Aldi and Food Cloud. When TK Maxx closed during the first lockdown, they donated all of their foodstuff to SKDP, which was distributed across South Kerry and greatly benefited the many clients being served by SKDP and managed to give them some treats as well. The SICAP, the Social Inclusion and Activation Team, were active in supporting low-income families, new communities and lone parents, especially during the time, by supplying activity packs for children, food parcels, sanitary packs and Easter eggs as well as responding to the digital divide by creating a laptop loan scheme for SKD clients and to be able to connect to social events as well as for educational purposes. 
SICAP Enterprise and Employment Officers supported the COVID-19 Business Support Line through the Local Enterprise Office and Kerry County Council. The SKDP staff organised online events, numerous online events, talks, training and meetings for all of their clients to keep people connected. In addition, they supported a number of community facilities to reopen in line with guidelines during the summer of 2020. The Rural Men's Outreach Officer, DJ Moore, remained in regular contact with over 250 men since beginning his role in August 2020 and has met with individuals when guidelines allowed, to very important and great effect. Kusla. During the pandemic, Kusla provided the following assistance and supports. Practical support through food hampers, medication delivery, funding made available for the purchase of home heating oil, home essentials for those particularly hampered by COVID. Close collaboration with St. Vincent de Paul, where they provided financial support through vouchers for families known to services most in need. Educational resources, including the provision of laptops and IT tablets and activity packs, made available to children in direct provision centres. In some situations, one-to-one face-to-face -to -face therapeutic interventions continue to take place following risk assessments in order to provide safety and stability to young people in crisis. Regular weekly remote check-ins with all key workers working with vulnerable families continued. 190 live metals continued in operation in Kerry throughout COVID. Additional funding was provided and continues to be provided by the Area Manager's Office to support additional food parcels for families involved with child and family services to support the family resource centres in delivering food parcels and meals on wheels. PPFS communicated the additional supports available through local media. The Children's, uh, the Children's and Young People Services uh, Committee compiled a directory of services to publicise all family support and services still available to families, including additional supports due to COVID-19 crisis. Lakela supports children and families, level three to four thresholds, child protection, child in care and their foster carers. Lakela maintained regular contact with parents and foster carers via phone and WhatsApp video calls. Workers engaged directly with the children via phone and WhatsApp video, inquiring about their day, their worries, suggesting activities, providing resources such as COVID-19 capsules, recipes, how to access online libraries, etc. Lakela also offered day respite to families, both in the community and to foster care placements under strain. Home visits and direct work with children and families continued to steadily increase weekly. By the 22nd of June, 89% of service delivery, home visits and direct work had resumed to pre-COVID-19 levels. The remaining 11% have chosen to continue with weekly phone support for either health or practical reasons. Additional practical supports were provided to young people in aftercare, in particular those most in need and most vulnerable. This included taxis being made available for young people should they require it, vouchers provided to buy food and care packs provided to young people containing basic and essential items. Brings me to the final group that uh, I'm paying tribute to this evening the Department of Social Protection. During an unprecedented 15 months, the department provided 11.5 billion in weekly payments and, and other supports to assist people impacted by COVID-19. The pandemic unemployment payment was introduced on a temporary basis in March 2020 as an unprecedented response, recognizing the unique circumstances of the COVID-19 pandemic. To date, over 865,000 people received at least one payment. Other supports included the €1,000 Enterprise Support Grant, arrangements to allow self-employed workers earn up to 960 over an eight-week period while in receipt of PUP, the part-time job incentive, the flexible approach to rent supplement, including those for victims of domestic abuse. The COVID-enhanced illness benefit payment will continue at its current rate. Additionally, the following will also happen. Recruitment of additional case officers to deal with the increased caseload capacity a new work placement programme to provide 10,000 work, place, work placement opportunities for unemployed people. The Jobs Plus Recruitment Subsidy Scheme will be expanded to help employers recruit up to 8,000 unemployed people with emphasis on people affected by COVID-19 and young people. 50,000 new places will also be made available in further education and training for upskilling. In addition to core income supports, the department put in place a range of other targeted measures during the initial stages of the pandemic. 
These included a four-week extension to the 2020 fuel alone season, arrangements for parents to register electronically the birth of their newborn babies, school meals programme, funding was continued by the department during periods of school closure under level five restrictions. New measures were introduced to support community-based programmes, CE and TU schemes, new online functionality on My Welfare, example, applying for, confirming your, uh, applying for and confirming your continued eligibility for the PUP and indeed the closing of the PUP when employment was allowed to be recommenced. Changes to redundancy schemes to extend the period of time that people can be laid off without automatically triggering redundancy terms. These were some of the many supports that were provided through the department. Arish, Tommy Gulair, Fir Boykasakt. That's the end of my contribution this evening. Um, it, it's quite extraordinary when you look at all that has been done by those four groups, those four organisations. And the theme throughout tonight will be people coming together and doing what they do best for the betterment of all of us who live in this county. Thanks very much uh, for that, uh, Norma. And I think, as, as you said there at the end, when you look at, back at, you know, what the Kerry GA clubs, what the South Kerry Partnership, what the Department of Social Protection, what TUSLA have done, it is extraordinary when we look back, uh, considering it is a relatively short time and all that has been done in that time. Thanks again, Norma, for that uh, introduction and for the, the recollections as to the tremendous work that have been done. And I think there at the end, talking about the Department of Social Protection, the scale of the monies is just staggering when you actually consider well, what has been done and how it has been done. Thanks again. Uh, just to move on in, in our evening here, uh, I want to introduce now uh, Nevo Sullivan. Neve is our head of our community section in Kerry County Council. And as Michael referred to earlier there in getting the community response uh, and the uh, community call up and running, it's important that we do remember that at that time, there was no precedent, there was no manual, there was no guidance, but there was plenty of willingness. And that's what Neve had to, had to deal with in the context of setting up something that became, as the Chief Executive has highlighted and as Mike has highlighted, the model at national level for how this should be done. You know, so it was a tremendous achievement to do so. And uh, I want to take the opportunity here just to thank you, Neve, and to thank your staff and to say, look, how as a work colleague, we're very, very proud of what has been done by you and by the staff in terms of responding so swiftly, so well, and uh, in such a, a very positive way, such an appreciative way for what you've done. So I'll hand over now to Neve O'Sullivan, who's the head of our community section in Kerry County Council. Thanks, Neve. Thanks, John. Thanks so much for those lovely, kind words. All part of the job, really. So we enjoyed it and delighted to be a part of it. So as a member of the Community Response Forum, I am delighted to be given the opportunity this evening to say thank you to all those who have worked so hard to keep us safe and well while maintaining essential services. In particular, I would like to acknowledge the work of postal staff, local shopkeepers, supermarket staff, chemists, cleaning staff, and delivery drivers who worked throughout the pandemic. During this challenging time, they too have become frontline workers. This evening, we want to make sure that all these people know how much we appreciate and value their work. The response to this pandemic has enabled new relationships and friendships to be formed. People are more likely now to say hello to their neighbors and, and people are still doing the shopping and taking online deliveries for their neighbours as a result of the relationships forged during this extraordinary time. The pandemic, I think, has also given people a new appreciation for their communities and local shops and services, where limits on travel due to the restrictions imposed led to people rediscovering shops nearby. Local retailers have a major role to play in providing goods and services but they also play an essential and broader role supporting local people and fostering community spirit. I think people now are more likely to shop locally compared to previously to help communities and local businesses to bounce back from the pandemic. I recall on the first day that the phone line went live that we received a number of calls from local shops, pharmacies and supermarkets informing us of the services they were providing to support their local communities and how they were adapting what they do to ensure that the most vulnerable were looked after. 
we were also inundated with calls from people who were out of work because of the restrictions, who wanted to help the elderly and isolated and give something back to their community. It was truly remarkable and one of my most memorable days in Kerry County Council. The community response to the COVID pandemic and the success of the community call in leveraging the community volunteer resource to support the most vulnerable during lockdowns and restrictions is a great example how communities in Kerry can respond and recover from a crisis. Community resilience is in fact fast emerging as a real theme in our work in Kerry County Council. Finally, but by no means least, I would like to acknowledge the work of Kerry's postal staff. Postal workers have always been central to their communities. Throughout the pandemic, they called into vulnerable people, particularly the elderly and isolated. In some cases, they were the only person people would see for the week or two weeks. A lot of the time, it was, it was about having a conversation and a catch up on local news, a friendly face. In Kerry, they also distributed leaflets to households produced by the Community Response Forum, informing people of the free phone line number to assist in the collection of groceries and prescriptions. The delivery of free postage paid postcards also enabled people to send love to family and friends. These heartwarming experiences were happening up and down the country. And I am delighted this evening on behalf of the Community Response Forum and Kerry County Council to say thank you for providing a valuable social service during the pandemic. As a member of the forum, it really did feel like we were all in this together, a whole county effort to look after each other during an extraordinary time in our history. Thank you. Thanks very much, Neve, for those words and, and again for the reminders of the efforts that have been made individually and collectively to, as you rightly say, to reach out for the postal workers calling to people for those who are, you know, making it easier on a daily basis for everybody simply by stopping having that human connection and having that chat, you know, uh, that's what keeps people going in terms of having that connection. Thanks again, Neve. We'll move on with an acknowledgement of the next group and uh, to make that acknowledgement for St. Vincent de Paul, for the Kerry Civil Defence, the Citizens Information Service and the Kerry Volunteer Centre, I'll hand you over to the Cahirlock of uh, the Tralee Municipal District, Councillor Terry O'Brien. Thanks, Terry. Um, uh, good evening. Thanks, John. Um, feels very strange sitting here, sitting here this evening, the sun outside the window speaking to a laptop, I think if my neighbours look in this and we're wearing my chain, they'll say he's very affected by that. He's wearing his chain continuously. Look, I'm delighted to be here, delighted to be part of this process as, as mayor of the Tralee Municipal District. Uh, it gives myself and my fellow Cahirok around the county the chance to wear our bling, which doesn't happen this year too much because of COVID. It's a great honour for me to be able to recognise the works of the groups involved in the Community Response Forum, in particular, the work of the four groups that John has just mentioned. Uh, I'm going to start with St. Vincent de Paul. They have uh, a, a long, a long been a presence in our lives in the county, assisting those who have found themselves in unfortunate situations, often through no fault of their own, needing a helping hand and some assistance. Through the past 18 months, the level on, of help has significantly increased, and there are plenty of grateful families out there who have benefited from the assistance of St. Vincent de Paul. In the Trulli area alone during 2020, they distributed more than 2,300 food hampers, more than 31,000 dinners. They spent 94,000 euro on fuel and other supports to individuals and families. They spent 61,000 euros on education support in Kerry. In addition, during this pandemic, the Food Share Kerry service, which collects quality surplus food from supermarkets and food producers, make it available to other organizations, managed to distribute 95 tons of food 95 tons, collecting it from food suppliers and shops and distributing it to 66 charity organizations who were able to utilize it and send it out to their families in need. Over the years, the work of St. Vincent de Paul 
could only be possible by the generosity of the people of Kerry, supporting their fundraising efforts. And for many, the, that, that generosity has been repaid over the past 18 months. I'd like to extend a, a special welcome to Junior Locke, who I see here with us this evening. Junior, you're very welcome. The Civil Defence. Uh, I think this is the group we all take for granted. If something happens, we can call in the Civil Defence, they'll be there. But again, they, they, they've, they've proved themselves once more. The Kerry Civil Defence, through their structures, were probably the most prepared group for such an event, and they provided critical assistance to the statutory agencies throughout. This included assisting with the transportation of COVID patients from hospitals to nursing homes and their own homes and to isolation centres, setting up the test centre in Ballymullen and transporting people there for their tests. The civil defence who also were also busy transporting the elderly and the wheelchair patients to health centres and doctors for vaccinations, while also transporting patients to hospital for non-COVID related treatments and appointments as well as providing administration assistance at blood transfusion clinics in Killarney, Castle Island and Ballybunion. In addition, Civil Defence staff have liaised directly with the, the district health nurses and social workers, many of whom asked to provide assistance in clients' homes for uh, practical jobs such as grass cutting and other small jobs. This was in addition to the other tasks including the delivery of shopping, delivery of medical supplies and medication for people who could not use the public transport. This is still ongoing, especially for immune compromised patients. I would like to thank the Civil Defence, and I think Tom Ross must have also be here. I don't see him, but just want to express our thanks to Tom and the Civil Defence. The Citizens Information uh, Service. The Citizens Information Service operates 17 centres across Cork and Kerry, but with the pandemic, they had to close their doors to a drop in service they provided. However, the problems that the public presented with continue to happen and staff continue to work tirelessly, providing advice, assistance and advocacy to the public, primarily over the phone and by email, and by offering essential appointments in Tralee, Killarney, Listowel and Carsabine, where a safe environment was put in place for staff and public to meet safely and discuss sensitive issues. As a result, more than 51,000 callers were helped by the South Munster Citizens Information Service with over 91,000 queries logged by phone or email. Staff worked on 244 advocacy cases throughout the year with large volumes of cases relating to social welfare and housing. In addition, the staff supported the citizens' information phone service so that clients could get the information and support they needed. The National Call Bank Service on our website was developed at the outset of the pandemic to support individuals for whom contact with services by phone or email was not possible. Again, South Munster CIS staff supported this valuable project throughout the year to ensure that people from all our communities were supported to access their rights and their entitlements. The Kerry Volunteer Centre. In the initial days of the COVID-19, Kerry Volunteer Centre played a key role in, in advising the governance and operations of the community response and free phone helpline that was established to keep communities in Kerry safe and well. It meant that Kerry had one of the first active community response forums and helplines in the country. The model developed was replicated nationally. The importance and significance of the roles played by the Kerry Volunteer Centre within establishment and ongoing operation of the Kerry Community Response Forum is very commendable. Kerry Volunteer Centre invested significant human resources and time to resolve the challenges facing the Community Response Helpline and acted as a key point of information and support for community groups and volunteers who wish to support and get involved in the community response to this pandemic in Kerry. The Volunteer Centre staff worked nights, evenings and weekends to support the Kerry Community Response phone, uh, free phone helpline. Its staff and supervisors to resolve queries and issues and problems that were arising. I would like to welcome Geraldine O'Sullivan here this evening and acknowledge your presence. The role Kerry Volunteer Centre played and continue to play, continues to play in supporting the many hundreds of communities and volunteer groups in Kerry and the 1,000 volunteers throughout the county. They're val valuing volunteering in Kerry during the 2020 photo book. Their provision of vital volunteer supports, Garda vetting services, 
ready and able training workshops and groups to develop their COVID-19 response policies or undertake while simultaneously being a key player in the effectiveness of the Kerry Community Response Forum. I thank that group also. So that uh, that's the finish of the, the three MD, um, our contribution tonight. Uh, we're a great little county when we get together. I think we, we I think we've proved that. Uh, it, it, it feels like a bit like the Eurovision led. So that concludes the votes of the truly uh, the truly municipal area. I want to thank everyone. I'm just absolutely thrilled to be part of this tonight. So back to you, John. Thanks again. Are we still here? Thanks for the votes from Tralee, Terry. Much appreciated. No problem. No problem. Sorry, I think we were we were offline there a second. So thanks for the votes from Tralee, Terry. Uh, plenty of dues points coming through there, no doubt about it. So thanks very much for for all of the the different groups. And again, I think as we go back over them, it just goes to show the the, the tremendous work that has been done. You know, as we recall, what what was done so quickly, so efficiently, so swiftly, and as you said, Terry. You know, when people pull together, there's nothing that's impossible in, in the county like Kerry in that regard. OK, moving on to our next speaker. Uh, it's important, and uh, Neve referenced it earlier, that look, particularly as we dealt with the, the pandemic, you know, we looked at the particularly vulnerable groups. And, you know, part of those were the elderly groups, as well as, you know, people in communities right throughout our county. So I'd like to ask now Siobhan Griffin, who's, uh, who works with our community section in Kerry County Council, also our age-friendly coordinator. I'll hand over to Siobhan just to speak to you on some of those aspects. Thanks very much, Siobhan. Um, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Um, Mira, Corlori, we Weidmanich, distinguished guests and colleagues. Um, I'm delighted to be here at this occasion tonight. Um, I suppose when the Taoiseach, Mr. Leo Varadkar, the then Taoiseach, announced the shutdown on the 27th of March, there was an immediate response across County Kerry um, by the agencies and community and voluntary groups, as has been described by the previous speakers. In this section of tonight's proceedings, I have the privilege of describing the work carried out by the Kerry Public Participation Network, which collaborated with the Kerry Age Friendly Programme and other members of the forum at interagency level. The public participation networks were introduced, as you know, following the enactment of the Local Government Act in 2014. And since then, they have been established in each county through collaboration between local authorities and the local community and volunteer-led organisations. In Kerry, we have a very successful public participation network and there are 850 community and voluntary groups registered with the Kerry PPN, which is led by the Secretariat and supported by the Development Officer, Caroline Toll. The membership and structure of uh, the PPN was immediately in a position to respond and worked collaboratively with the Age Friendly Program and other agencies to support the Kerry Community um, Response Establishment. Over that first weekend in March, work commenced on a mapping project to map the community services in the county and an information leaflet incorporating the phone numbers and highlighting the community helpline was produced. By the Monday evening after that weekend, the 30th of March, 10,000 leaflets had been printed and ready for distribution by the Gardaí, local development companies, Red Cross, through Meals and Wheels, and indeed the other members of the response forum. The speed of the response was possible due to the relationships that existed with the community and voluntary groups around the county and the strong interagency relationships that had been built up over many years and work programmes. And many of the speakers have referenced this already tonight. Nationally, the PPN structures were identified as a key conduit for information. On a daily basis, uh, updates from the various government departments were circulated to the 850 groups through the BPN database, the website, other social media, including Facebook, Twitter, and et cetera. And this worked in tandem with the Kerry County Council's um, PR. Due to the previous work on the Access for All project, a volunteer, uh, Catherine White, that we should acknowledge tonight, approached Caroline Toll, the development officer, 
with a proposal to communicate the information using sign language for the deaf community. This information was carried on both the PPN and Kerry County Council websites and actually was taken up and shared in other parts of the country and again was highlighted as a model of best practice. Throughout the pandemic, the Secretariat of the PPN did not cease activities, moved online and continued to review and address emerging needs. In fact, the membership of the PPN increased during the past year due to the fact that people became aware of the information dissemination role that it, it had. Throughout the county, the impact of the pandemic on the work of community and volu voluntary groups has been immense. These groups make a significant contribution to the social, cultural, economic and environmental fabric of County Kerry and all enhance the life of their members and the communities which they serve. In addition, they have huge experience and expertise in the issues that directly affect people, communities and the environment in their areas of operation. In March 2020, much of this activity was immediately stopped and a lot of people lost their social life. However, those that were in a position to stepped forward and did more, in some cases changing their focus and taking on new roles, again displaying the community sector's resilience and ability to adapt. In addition, there are unsung heroes, people we will never hear about, those that responded at local level and made a huge difference to people's lives. As 2020 progressed, it was clear that other forms of response were required and an interagency group was established to lead out on Keep Well initiatives. The PPN and Age Friendly Programme were directly involved in the following projects. These included an initiative entitled In the Bag, a wellbeing pack incorporating information, advice, food safety, um, exercise advice, and again, the HSE and the uh, frailty intervention team in the hospital were involved in this. And this was distributed through, uh, again, local development companies, Meals and Wheels, and um, the Red Cross. A gratitude journal, which was distributed widely to individuals, to people in nursing homes, a biodiversity spotter sheet with, um, developed with the, Casey, the Kerry County Council Biodiversity Officer, a planter project with local which was developed with local development and men's sheds, um, the purchase of acorn tablets provided to nursing homes through the Age Friendly Programme to enable people to keep in contact with their loved ones. This group is still working and as we move forward through this pandemic, a number of areas have been identified where collaborative responses will be needed, including addressing the impact of the digital divide on older people, people with physical and intellectual disabilities, disadvantaged families, children and youths, and people living in socially isolated circumstances. Information deficits that still exist and how we address this as the community changes and becomes more diverse. The importance of community health and well-being, the role of carers in the community. However, what has been reinforced is reinforced in the past year is that firstly, there is a vibrant and resilient community sector in the county willing to adapt and step forward. We also learned the meaning again of Erska Akela Avar Nadina. We all depend on one another. There is strong collaboration between the agencies and the community, and this work developed over many years was evident during the crisis. Finally, one of the key messages throughout the pandemic was about holding firm, and this was taken from a poem by President Michael D. Higgins, the final lines of which certainly reflect the response of all the groups involved in the community response forum and became, I think, a motto for some of us working on it. Old firm, take care, come home together. Gaurav Mahagriv. Thanks very much, Siobhan, for the, those words and for the, the, the recognition and the recollections of uh, the strength of the community and the community agencies within Kerry and the communities themselves and the fact, as you rightly said, that it gave us a very good, you know, uh, sounding block. It gave us a very good scaffolding and a very good um, foundation on which to build it. And it is important to recognise that foundations don't go in without architects of those foundations. And it's important to recognise yourself as one of those architects in building those community uh, relationships and building those community resiliences on which we build. So again, thanks, Siobhan not alone for that work over the last year, but as you rightly recognised, 
It was building upon years of work in getting our community structures uh, to such a very strong level in Kerry. So thanks very much for that again. Okay, just moving on in terms of uh, our uh, appreciation night and the appreciation forum, uh, we have a, the next group that we have to uh, acknowledge and recognize is Gudras Belterpe, the local link Kerry, uh, the Kerry ETB, and the Family uh, Resource Centre and the Meals on Wheels groups. And Bwahlam Anish Glecher Kahirlak, Bardasaka Tool, Ilan Kiri, Abbas Karkogina, Korlor Shemas McGarrett, Kon Ichin, Yenav. Gormago Shemas. Gormago to John. Tabro Norman, so may all ask Nislua, so far, not on phone. Um, Femma Dorish, Hamkin Gout, Er Kera Agriot, Udras Magat, Lok Link Kerry, um, Kerry ETB, Agus HSE Community Work Sector. So, uh, to start, on behalf of myself and my fellow elected members, particularly those from the municipal district of Castellan and Cockagrina, I would like to express our gratitude to the, all the organizations and agencies who worked so hard throughout the pandemic. We have always been fortunate to have strong community links throughout the county. And while the negative impact that COVID has done to Kerry cannot be underestimated, the silver lining is that our community spirit has proven itself to be strong, resilient, and can withstand severe pressure. So if I'm a daughter, I'm a little bit of a little bit community response forum we udras nagat to kankin kahar hai is me counter gaskta yena der fogrit agas kapter olus ek tutle fiesta muito nagat ta an ober ta to ke vir shula ka lelin en pandem na shervishi takhir te breshavi a fall ko mover de takhir na takhir ti erfi a fadas na kushti donakha I am in fast life hole and a dine a wenig bra go more and a shervishi a bean to the color fall. I shan tachy up a shay a tart on food was. Vina Christi donacher, Bob Talano de Raig, a tour compord, just a dine a big brahara, or log a law, other so shacht and go shachtin. Come I lish and go not over a beer shoe leg and two hood was. Glockaberg a founder lish and do clan a wee kurha rompa, a korla agas tachy at their fathers na kushti, na kokum an eksula ata marquid lanak da sel na gretakta. Mar hampla kokum an fabra kakagwine, kokum an fabra nyatrug, an sa egiri hir, egiri has, kokush da gretakta i raak agas fabra na drumada. Hogan thu dras is tak shkem na Instantly, it's got a a clean call of the Abla Lanunta Raik Ectradal, Confast El Hustemere, Obertatuk, Marham Blanch Game Tradal Erlini, a Kaurgamulis, the call of the Sherishi call Lord the Professionta, Honoriat Exolok Atoguk, Hokshesha, and Mishnata Gakena Lanunta Raik, Conan Kanski Be Afficient. A down to son with blue kangle, either in two draws, a gascola conte kiri, comalish na hagrisi start ele, honeykin two, na ravena fakir and girl could devour and pande divers shaw. Local in Kerry. For many of the people who called the community response forum for assistance during the pandemic, issues with travel formed a significant part of the cause. The reason was simple. With lockdown, the traditional transport networks had stopped or reduced with the ability, ability to get to important appointments and the ability to get to important appointments severely curtailed. Local in Kerry was a critical piece of the puzzle in, in maintaining their routes throughout the county and in ensuring that transport was available through the Community Response Forum. With buses operating from Bally Longford to Bonan, from Bar Baradoff to Brandon Point and elsewhere within the county, local link carry bus services covered the length and breadth of the kingdom throughout the last 20 months. Bus services have continued to operate providing a valuable service for those who need access to public transport to go about their daily lives. 
This unfortunately didn't mean business as usual and, and meant a significant challenge to local link carry to adapt bus services, routes and seating capacity and adhere to the public health guidelines and to keep passengers safe. Local link carry bus drivers also went above and beyond the call of duty by offering and collecting a delivery service for their regular passengers who are not travelling due to cocooning our public risk public restrictions. This saw drivers dropping groceries and medications to people's homes on the return journey of the bus services. Great, great tribute must be paid to the bus drivers who work every day on the front line, providing a service and keeping passengers safe. Local link carry bus service continue, continues to deliver up to 400 meals each week on behalf of the Nagashals, Castle Gregory, Balance Gaelics and the Glens Meals and Wheels organisations. Board Idakus Agus Aluna Kerry, Kerry ETB. Like many groups, the role of the, of the Kerry ETB changed significantly during the pandemic, particularly in relation to its training course, courses, which could, they could no longer operate physically. However, the ETB, like so many organisations, looked at their skills and the skills of their staff and, app- and apprentices and found a role where they could help the community. Apprentices and culinary staff at Kerry College Monavandi campus provided lunches to members of the civil defence, ambulance services and COVID-19 test centre staff in Tralee five days a week during the summer of 2020. Technology teacher Mihalo Sulva, Klaus Lee, Tralee, produce face shields for frontline staff and members of nursing homes using a special laser cutting machine. Common chef apprentices, apprentices at the Kinmare Fodder Education Training Centre provide a Christmas dinner to the residents at Thayer Lane Social Centre in Kinmare. Kerry ETB provided learners and students in further education and schools with laptops where required to ensure seamless continuation of remote learning. In addition, Kerry College looked ahead and saw that while many businesses were closed as a result of the pandemic, there were other businesses still operating under difficult circumstances. Aware of the need to create heightened awareness of the issues relating to safety operating during the pandemic, Kerry College created a new business support unit which focused on supporting businesses during lockdown by providing a number of free online courses, including principles of hygiene and PPE, infection prevention and control, stay safe for the hospitality sector, managing compliance for COVID-19, sanitation and sterilization in beauty salons and spas. This work that is ongoing by Kerry ETP has formed a critical part of the Kerry Safe Destination Programme, where commercial and hospitality businesses can train their staff to achieve accreditation for COVID-19 compliance, something that will add significantly to the customer's awareness that cleanliness, cleaning regimes and public health guidance is being adhered to. Kerry ETB also continues to provide support to the community, including their staff, students and learners throughout the pandemic. HSE Community Work Sector. This there is a long and proud tradition of working together to promote the health and social gain of people right across the life cycle and the generations going back to 1975. During the pandemic, local communities and local groups really stepped up to the plate and responded to the needs like never before. People looked out for one another. This was both, both formal volunteers working in groups, but also the spirit of community and its in really came to the fore and Kerry people can be rightly proud of the way they responded. In March 2020, a directive came to close all day services from active retirement groups to social centres and daycare centres. This was a huge blow to many people. However, many, many groups repurposed. A whole range of alternative services sprang up almost overnight right across the county, from Brandon to Ratmore, 
from Nakanur to Lara, where two completely new meals on wheel services set up. In all, approximately 40 meals on wheels groups spun into action and provide in the region up 20,000 meals a week since then. It was not only meals, it was also other services also, and vital contacts were established and maintained. Despite everything, despite all the losses and loneliness and the isolation, there was also so much good work undertaken, mainly by volunteers and supported by the HSE and the Community Response Forum. Mark Freach, as day services plan to reopen in the coming week, weeks, it's important everybody does everything in our power to continue to support these linkages and partnership, partnership, partnerships based on parity of esteem and recognising that they're scar a kail a var nudina. Gulamila Mahagal Gulair. Thanks very much, Janice, uh, for those uh, words with regard to the Family Resource Centres, the Meals on Wheels, the local link, Kerry, the Kerry ETB, and Mother Lishin, Udras Nagel, to the Hagasan Saw River, Yenshe, or Fagan, Blina Nuas. Thanks very much, Janice, for, for those words. And again, it, you know, as you go back over them, it's, it's, uh, it's heartening and it's, uh, I suppose, you know, humbling as well to see what has been done and the manner in which it has been done and something which certainly in time to come, we look back on with a lot of pride. There's no question or doubt about it. As Seamus mentioned there, a lot of the work done was by volunteers, people who stepped up, who have nothing to gain except doing something good for their fellow citizens here in Kerry. And a lot of that work was coordinated uh, through our next speaker, Geraldine O'Sullivan, who is the manager of the Kerry Volunteer Centre. So I'll hand over to Geraldine now to speak to you. Thanks very much, Geraldine. Ach hirlech ag an uisla agus a chord agus leir. Um, Tommy Anna Sosta a bhí aon a nocht chun gurcus agus mas a hispánt pina díni ogach hev de pobal. Clear vina un rower chun cower agus siúnas a chuirt leis na leanta na mina agus an bliain a nuas. Is untuk agus docrata un bed ebr hadinaca ata sa gach ort a caru a frastel agus a tahiot de díni sa pobal círi. At all or like you do. Mayor, Chief Executive, elected representatives, volunteers, and friends, it is my absolute pleasure as manager of Kerry Volunteer Centre to be here this evening to acknowledge the people behind the valiant volunteering and collaboration that has been undertaken and is still ongoing to keep our community safe and well during this protracted and prolonged pandemic. Ever before the arrival of COVID-19, our county was blessed to have a vibrant tradition of volunteering. Yet COVID-19 has illuminated and showcased the range and depth of supports and services that volunteers provide in our county. And as other speakers here to have said tonight, and the willingness of Kerry people to volunteer en masse in times of need. Tonight it is my pleasure and it is deserved that we pay tribute to volunteers, to community and voluntary groups. It is right and fitting that we reaffirm and affirm their importance, that we state the value that we hold for their services, that we commend their dedication, and in particular, we honour their selflessness. And while everybody understandably has experienced the impact of the pandemic's associated lockdowns and the pandemic itself differently, for many people in Kerry, both young and old, it has been a time of incredible uncertainty and strain. Yet, the kindness, comfort, reassurance and support, which volunteers and groups all over Kerry provided in parishes, down Boharines, in villages and towns, whether it be that bringing shopping to the front door, dropping off a prescription or, and a pension, preparing and delivering a hot meal with a smile or with a few words was vital. This decency and responsiveness of community volunteers and groups have kept the people and communities of North, South, East, West and Mid Kerry connected, healthy, resilient and well. And it cannot be underestimated. The partnership, and as Moira C. you referred to earlier, the cooperation, coordination and collaboration of the roles undertaken 
between volunteers, voluntary groups, businesses, statutory agencies, frontline emergency services, frontline workers, the local media and businesses, as highlighted by many of our speakers here tonight and those who have yet to speak, have been embedded in our community response model, which remains phenomenal. And the sense of collective purpose and togetherness is without doubt one of the most enduring legacies of our common interests, our common commitment to our wonderful kingdom, to our wonderful county, its people and communities. It is hard and it's difficult and I'm reluctant to showcase a particular individual or groups because there are so many around Kerry that have done phenomenal work. Yet, I think it's important to showcase and maybe give a slight insight into this togetherness and cooperation that was so unexpected and so, and so phenomenal. And I suppose one case in point that I comes to mind is the story of that gentleman in the stool who gave us a large donation of elastic. Don't ask me what he was doing with so much elastic, but anyway, he had an incredible amount of elastic, which we needed for a volunteer out in Dingle who had turned her business from being that of a curtain maker into a mask maker. And after putting the appeal out to Radio Kerry, this gentleman contacted us and another gentleman volunteer acted as a courier, collecting the elastic, dropping it to Dingle in West Kerry from Killarney and in the process collecting extra material to drop elsewhere in the county to make more masks. And in turn, these masks were delivered to nursing homes, homeless centres and resident centres and for the general public all over Kerry. That is just I suppose I just picked that example to show the togetherness of businesses, individuals, volunteers and communities for the greater good in Kerry. And I suppose another example, which I'd like to showcase, just particularly highlighting the amazing role and the efforts of children and young people and families and individuals and collectively coming together throughout the county, were those occasions by which the most beautiful and, uh, and heartwarming cards, drawings, letters and pieces of artwork were created by children and families and individuals who contacted us and registered with us and were in turn sent to nursing home residents, not only in Kerry, but throughout Ireland. They were sent to women experiencing the difficulties and the challenges of domestic abuse and to other families, other children and other adult individuals living in direct provision centres. So it was just phenomenal. And these two examples are just some of the many stories that are accompanying, I think it was 1,300 and something individuals who contacted and availed of our services to volunteer. Each individual, each story, each case equally remarkable and admirable. And I guess tonight, as we take time to recognize and value the many groups that responded to the pandemic, I would like to draw my particular focus right now to recognize and reflect on the contribution of those individuals um, and neighbours who are unaffiliated with any of our groups and clubs throughout the county, who nevertheless volunteered of their own accord to check in, to keep an eye out for an elderly neighbour and people in need within our communities and within their communities. Their consideration, their care, their kindness, their time in times of uncertainty, strain and stress has had an immense impact on the welfare and well-being of those who they helped and is deserving of our admiration and deserves to be honoured. While it has been a surreal year, and I won't go through the statistics of the amount of calls and the amount of trainings and the amount of guard abetting processes, um, which, which is a bit staggering. At the same time, we in Kerry Volunteer Centre would not want to have been anywhere else or been any other role than serving and supporting volunteering and the community and voluntary sector in Kerry and its valley and volunteers. I really sincerely appreciate the opportunity given here tonight by the Mayor and Cahirnock, the CEO and her team, to allow us to reflect, to value, to share our thanks and appreciation for the volunteers in the community and voluntary groups in Kerry, which have kept us well and safe and who continue to keep us safe and well. Thank you for the opportunity and just um, our endearing respect to all those who have been involved. Thank you very much, Geraldine. Uh, much appreciated for those words. And I, I think uh, certainly uh, your reference there to decency has resonated, I think, with a lot of people. And as you as you call there at the end as well, you know, just looking out for your neighbour, you know, with that common sense of, of appreciation of everybody and people needing a hand. And I suppose we should always be conscious on occasions like this that many people don't like to ask, but many people are in need. And I think we should all recognise that, that sometimes don't wait to be asked, you know, offer that hand and offer that bit of assistance 
and it makes such a difference to people in terms of when it is offered. So thanks again, uh, Geraldine, to yourself and to the volunteers and all the, the unsung work that they have done. And it's a great opportunity, as you said this evening, to say a huge thank you to, to them in that regard. So thanks again, Geraldine, for that. Just moving on with the next group that we want to recognize, uh, we want now to uh, acknowledge and recognize the Alone Association here in Kerry, the Red Cross, the North and East and West Kerry Development. And to do so, uh, I'll hand you over to the chair of the uh, Listowel Municipal District, uh, the Cahir of the, of the Listowel Municipal District, Councillor Michael Foley. Thanks very much, Michael. Thanks, John, and good evening to everyone. On behalf of the people of Kerry, and in particular, the people of North Kerry. I would like to sincerely thank everyone here tonight for their work, their efforts and their dedication to make sure that their communities were safe and that everybody in those communities has access to whatever help that they needed. In theory and on paper, it sounds like a simple job, but the reality is so much different. Ensuring that every angle is covered, nobody is forgotten, and all the structures that are in place can withstand coming under severe pressure while everyone themselves is working under the same pressure is quite a difficult task. However, I would like to talk about three organisations who overcame those difficulties in the past uh, 15 months during this pandemic period. The first group I'd like to talk about is the North and East Kerry Development. Realising that they were going to have a deal to deal with a much changed and unclear situation for an unpredicted amount of time in EWKD assess the situation from the perspective of keeping as many people as safe and healthy as possible by maximizing resources, contacts and networks. In EWKD maintained contact with clients and ensured that all staff were able to work safely and efficiently from home while continuing to support their clients across all programs in whatever way possible. Sometimes it was a simple phone call to offer a listening ear or a referral to an existing support group, such as food share or a newly established service, such as the new food service in the Listowel Family Resource Centre, supported by NEWKD's SICAP Rural Social Scheme and Revamp. Local support networks were put in place throughout North, East and West Kerry, including Tralee, coordinated by locally based staff members that compiled of countrywide community call services, ensuring that any gaps in services needed were filled as quickly as possible. These gaps included emergency plumbers, food shopping, freezer deliveries, rubbish collections, grass cuttings and many more tasks. The value of and the need of the participation approach was never more positive, positively demonstrated as connections were utilized with the Department of Employment Affairs and Social Protection, chambers and local development companies to ensure that employers and employees throughout the county had information in a timely manner regarding COVID-19 related social welfare payments, etc. Later on, as these services and support were well established, other needs were assessed and addressed, including the development of a laptop loan scheme in partnership with Tralee Chamber and the Tech Corps, funding of online educational as well as mental health support services. An EWKD also supported micro and social enterprises to reopen with SICAP tools, RSS workers, all actively supporting the latter as a community, laundries, meals on wheels, etc. The second group I would like to talk about is the Trilly Red Cross. The Trilly branch of the Irish Red Cross is one of a network of over 100 branches throughout the, the county, run entirely by volunteers. Traditionally, like the other volunteer services, the Tralee branch would be involved in supporting community events, but the majority of events cancelled, the Red Cross quickly transitioned to provide support for communities and individuals 
while working closely with groups under the umbrella of the Kerry Community Response Forum. One key piece of work carried out by the Red Cross involved the distribution of over 1,000 in the bag wellness packs and information envelopes. Each bag contained particular resources such as local support, contact information, advice on preparing for winter and extreme winter conditions, and exercise plans helping people to stay active for periods of reduced movement, reminding people of the importance of minding their physical and mental health and well-being by adding health, healthy and helpful habits to daily routines. Like other emergency services and volunteer services, the Red Cross also work closely with those who are cocooning or finding it difficult to get about, making, making runs for grocery shopping, pharmacy appointments to pick up medicines, and even helping to bring vulnerable patients for doctor and hospital appointments. Final group I'd like to talk about the loan carrier. In response to the pandemic, Alone announced the launch of a national support line and additional supports for older people who had concerns or were facing difficulties relating to the outbreak of COVID-19 in Ireland. As an emergency organisation of the Public Health Emergency COVID-19 subgroup for vulnerable people, Alone worked in collab collaboration with the Department of Health and the HSE on a coordinated national response to support older people in Ireland during the pandemic. The support offered included a new national support line, which launched on Monday, 9th of March 2020, and additional outreach and coordinated support. This support line was put in place to complement the clinical advice and information being provided by the HSC through its website and operates from 9 p.m. to 8 p.m. seven days a week. In addition to the above alone, also provided a support and befriending telephone service to their older people. This in service enabled volunteers to keep in regular contact and to provide extra companionship and support to those older people who required it during the pandemic. Alone also continued to offer support in addressing challenging issues and include and finding solutions in a number of areas, including housing, finance, assistive technology, and healthcare needs. A big well done to these three groups in the difficult times. Finally, one positive key feature came to the fore during these difficult times is that of community spirit and coming together to look after the most vulnerable in our society. Again, I would like to thank everyone here tonight for their hard work over the last 15 months. Thank you, John. Thanks very much, uh, Mike, for that and, and uh, for the recognition of Alone and the Red Cross and North East and West Kerry Development. And just to say to you, uh, just what you were seeing on screen, uh, with the community response call staff, that's just a trailer and a taster for what's to come. Councillor Cronin will we'll cover that off. In, in his section. Uh, so, again, again, thank you to Mike for that recognition of the work that Mary and our colleagues in, in Alone are doing, that the Red Cross have done, and that Eamon O'Reilly and uh, his colleagues in North East and West Ferry Development have contributed right throughout the pandemic. So, thanks again for that. Just to move on in terms of the recognition, uh, an organization that has, I suppose, been to the, the fore in terms of the responsiveness from the point of view of the medical situation that is the pandemic, uh, the testing situation that is the pandemic, and now moving into the phase of the vaccination situation that is the, the pandemic and the reality of it. Uh, that's that organization, the HSE, had been to the fore and have been thrust into something that they could never have imagined and have had to adapt, have had to recalibrate and have got to look at how they carry out their functions in that regard. So with regard to how the HSE has adapted and carried out its community role, uh, I want to hand you over to Dolores McElligot, uh, who looks after the community services element of the HSE. So Dolores, you're very welcome and thanks for joining us. Thanks. Thank you very much, John. Um, I'm delighted to be here this evening um, to acknowledge the tremendous work that's been done by the community and voluntary sector in Kerry over the most difficult 18 months. 
Um, unfortunately, my colleague Hilary Scanlon can't be here with us tonight and she has been a really important cog in the Community Response Forum. I'm not going to go over um, some of the information that's been given already, so I'll keep it brief. But I suppose the HSE has been to the fore, um, certainly is probably the, the agency that has been under most um, pressure in the last 18 months. And I suppose it was then more than ever that we required the support of our partners, the community and voluntary sector. And fortunately, like always, they came to the fore. Um, and it was really obvious that they um, grappled with the response with opened arms. Um, so I suppose we're really, really grateful to the community, the community and voluntary sector who've been working in partnership with the uh, community work department in the HSE since 1985, 1975. I think Councillor Cossie Fitzgerald already mentioned some of the great work that's been done in terms of Meals on Wheels. Um, but I suppose one of the groupings that the HSC had, I suppose, a, a, a need to address particularly was, um, I suppose, the, the cohort of the over 70s. Um, last March in 2020, um, the new term of cocooning came into play, where I suppose over 70s were cocooning. And I suppose then or ever, we need our partners to respond. And indeed they did. And I suppose there's been a number of services that have been evolved and repurposed over the last 18 months. Those including um, the whole concept of daycare at home. Um, daycare centres were forced to close as social centres and active retired groups in, in March 2020 in line with public health guidance. And I suppose the need to support older people was never more. So indeed, um, the community and voluntary group to, through the daycare centres um, developed the concept of daycare at home, supporting people in their own home, and that included visitation in line with public health guidelines and providing them with maybe even virtual daycare. And we've many examples of that throughout the county. We developed in, many, in conjunction with many of the partners around the table here tonight or on virtual table, um, Kerry's Call, a befriending telephone service, the only be telephone befriending service in the county. And that has been hugely successful. Um, at the moment, I think 50 people are registered to that countywide. In in initially piloted in a, the Castle Island area and now has grown into the wider county. We developed, I suppose, one of the, the, the issues that the HSC were particularly concerned us about is, I suppose, ensuring that we kept pe older people mo mobilised and in conjunction with many of our um, healthcare professionals and voluntary sector exercise facilitators, physios, we developed um, exercise booklets. And they worked in tandem where people could work, um, could utilise and develop uh, and could could keep their keep themselves mobilized uh, in, in their own home. Um, so I suppose we in the HSC who've never been under so much pressure, um, I think really recognized that it was this year and last year that we really needed the partners more than ever. Um, and I suppose we are just delighted uh, to be at, at a stage now where um, our daycare centres are reopening next week, um, the commencement of, start, of some of them starting next week. And I suppose that was a welcome announcement by the government um, in, in recent weeks. So I suppose, um, I suppose from the HSE's perspective, um, I suppose we really want to acknowledge the partnership, the Community Response Forum, which was a huge part of, of uh, our support mechanism and supporting our community. And I think that's um, really evident by the fact of the great work that's done and the engagement by people into the sector. Um, and I think it's never been more important, I suppose, that our Scott Kayla of our meet. Um, so again, I want to thank all the community and voluntary sector. I, I think it would also be remiss me if I didn't acknowledge the great work that's done by the call centre staff over the last 18 months and connecting with our partners to to provide a service to our to our community members and that included 
as as John said earlier, taking people to vaccination centres, that has been a huge challenge for the HSE, huge challenge to ensure that people weren't um, weren't isolated, that they were connected, and, and the community response for, forum has been really instrumental of that. So look, Cogordigus, I want to congratulate every partner uh, and um and thank you for for your support over the last 18 months. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Dolores, for that. And, and it's important that I think we all uh, acknowledge our own thanks to you and your colleagues in the HSE for the manner in which you, you know, as an organization have been to the forefront of dealing with the pandemic. And we wish you certainly and your colleagues all the best with the restoration of the daycare services and also with the continued rollout of the vaccination, you know, to be at a stage where I think is it that the 30 to 39 cohort are now opening up for vaccinations is a great a great step forward. So we wish you well in that. And again, thanks for your, your, your words there in terms of the partnership approach that has been developed. So thanks very much, Dolores, for that. Okay, we come to the last uh, grouping here on our, our appreciation evening. And uh, we want to now uh, acknowledge uh, IRD Duhalo, the Garda Siakana, the Order of Malta, and the community cause support uh, line itself. And to do so, I'll hand you over to the Cahirlock of the Killarney Municipal District, uh, Councillor Brendan Cronin. Thanks, Brendan. Yeah, thank you very much, John, and uh, greetings from the Killarney Municipal District uh, on this very, very important evening and, and this important event. Um, Cahirlock, uh, Chief Executive, Councillors, uh, Council staff, and representatives of the groups gathered here tonight, uh, I am honoured to be invited as a representative of the elected members to be able to express my appreciation to the groups here tonight. Everybody has played their part uh, over the past 18 months as we struggle to come to grips with this horrific virus. And at the same time, our hearts have been warmed by the response, both at individual and community level, to the challenges which we have faced. I am proud to highlight just some of the groups uh, across the county, and I will begin with the IRD Duhalo. Despite the lockdown experienced by many sectors, for the IRD Duhalo local development company, it has been full steam ahead for many of its services over the past 15 months. As many of their social enterprise supports, those who are most vulnerable in the community, Throughout lockdowns, they, they experienced a huge increase in the demands for their meal service, producing and delivering over 36,000 meals to senior citizens and to those not in a position to cook for themselves throughout the Duhalla area in Northeast Cork and Southwest Kerry. There was a sharp rise in the number of people availing of the laundry service, which offers a collection service which meant that those who were medically vulnerable did not have to leave their homes, and this was critically important. IRD Duhalla's existing friendly phone call service, which was established in 2016, schedules weekly phone calls to older people who might experience loneliness through lack of communication with the outside world. During the past 18 months, this saw an increased number of users and through converse, conversations with the callers, a gap was identified as people were experiencing difficulties getting to and from their GPs or for a vaccine. Through the auspices of the Community Response Forum, transport was arranged for them to meet their appointments. At the same time, staff in the furniture revamp section put their talents to work by making custom face masks to help reduce transmission of COVID. While IRD provides upskilling, training, and education, the physical restrictions brought a halt to many training programs. But the trainers identified a gap, filling physical classes with online training, bringing great opportunities to access a wider range of trainers from all across the globe, and brought new and exciting courses to the region. For some IRD clients, online classes were not an option and for programs targeting individuals with a disability or a mental ill health, vital face-to-face -face supports were continued with additional precautions put in place to protect both staff and clients. I will move on to Angarda Shikana. 
The aim of the COVID-19 Garda policing operation was to increase the number of personnel on frontline duties and increase the capability of Garda Shikana in providing assistance to those most vulnerable in communities across the county. As an organisation, Garda Shikana completely restructured their frontline units, drawing on personnel from sections such as community policing, immigration and juvenile liaison office. The organisation entered into the unknown with the sole theme of helping others. Having 40% more personnel on frontline duties required a strong focus and clear direction of where policing was needed during this pandemic. The goal was to keep our people safe and every plan and operation that the uh, Gardaí developed strictly adhered to this principle. In addition to policing, Gardaí delivered prescriptions, collected essential items, brought in buckets of coal, or just called for a socially distanced chat. As part, of, as part of the Gardaí's role in ensuring public health advice was followed in order to reduce transmission rates, the force significantly increased their presence on Kerry roads, beaches, parks and other local amenity areas. In Kerry alone, almost 15,000 COVID-19 checkpoints were conducted with over 20,000 patrols of amenity areas in an effort to prevent the spread of COVID-19. And that effort continues now with the reopening of businesses and the reopening of our towns and villages. I will move on now to the Order of Malta. October 2019 to 2020 was supposed to mark a year of celebration to mark the 80th year of the Order of Malta unit. Little did anybody know where the year would take everyone. As a result, traditional events where the Order of Malta have provided support over the past 80 years, such as the Killarney races, the Ring of Kerry cycle, major GEA games, and many more community events were all cancelled. And the emphasis of services provided by the Altar of Malta changed too. Just because events had stopped didn't mean that the Order stopped too. They did not shy away from community involvement, working in conjunction with other agencies to make trips to the chemist, to provide people with medication, to carry out and deliver grocery shopping and making welfare calls to the elderly, and more vulnerable members of the community. Even the youngest members got involved, baking goods for the local emergency services. During this time, the Order also kept learning and upskilling to face the challenges and complications COVID-19 caused in the medical health services. This resulted in members completing courses in PPE, COVID, vaccinations, EMT, and others. This all prepared members to meet the needs of our communities when the Order volunteered to do hospital, medical and vaccination appointments and transfers to Kerry, Cork and Dublin. The Order have even crossed the border and crossed the county bounds, helping out at the Park O'Key Vaccination Centre and in a sign of some return to normality, they have been on hand to provide assistance at the races in both Killarney and Mallow, albeit behind closed doors. I now want to move on to the community call support. Uh, it, this includes Kerry County Council and Pearson Fiskiven staff. Throughout this evening, we have heard a number of speakers acknowledge the contribution of our volunteers and our stakeholders. It would be remiss of me not to acknowledge the work of the staff who manned the community call lines from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. seven days a week. Since April 2020, a total of 3,700 cases were processed, a fantastic achievement. In a response to a pandemic, they answered the call to deal with a situation that none of us had any experience of. It was challenging for the staff who were trying to resolve the issues of vulnerable people throughout the county, while at the same time, were only human and had similar fears and concerns themselves, whether it be in relation to loved ones, parents and family members. 
Yet, at all times, these fears were never evident when they answered the phone. And all callers were greeted professionally, friendly voices who went above and beyond the call of duty to ensure that the caller's issues were dealt with. When people made calls to the community call helpline, the issues they outlined were often upsetting in nature. However, they were always handled sensitively. And it is a testament to the work of this group that they were unreservedly praised for their commitment, dedication and empathy towards people who were going through a very difficult time. At the early, earlier stages of the pandemic, uh, the community helpline, the work carried out by all the staff of Pierce and Fitzgibbon in Listowel in providing advice, technical assistance, data protection, and weekend and evening cover for the community call was essential in helping the project to get up, uh, to get up and running uh, quickly. It really showed the spirit of volunteerism in the, in the business community, which was replicated throughout the county. And I want to pay a specific tribute to all representatives of the groups that have joined us for this section tonight. It is critically important to give appropriate recognition to the groups all across the board who've given tirelessly of their time. And I suppose to finish, in his uh, inaugural speech in 1961, President John F. Kennedy made a very famous quote, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. And ladies and gentlemen who have joined us here tonight, you have epitomized the sentiments that was expressed in that very famous speech. I want to sincerely thank each and every one of you for what you have done for our community, our people, and our county, and you deserve every um, moment of the recognition given here tonight. Thank you, John. Thanks very much, Brendan. Thanks for that, and, and thanks for the, the recognition that has been given there uh, during that piece to the Pearson Fitzgibbon staff, the Kerry County Council staff, and the community call support. Uh, Noel Lucy and his colleagues in the Order of Malta, uh, Superintendent Flora Murphy and his colleagues in the Gardaí, and uh, Maura Walsh as uh, Chief Executive of IRD Johanna and her staff and all the work that has been done in that regard. So again, thanks to everybody for the work that has been done and the acknowledgements uh, that have been outlined there by the career of Brendan uh, Cronin from uh, Killarney Municipal District. Thanks again, Brendan. Okay, as we come to the end of our appreciation night and to close off the, the, the proceedings, uh, I just hand back to the Cahirlach of uh, Kerry County Council, uh, Councillor Patrick Connor Scartin, to make some closing remarks to you. Thanks very much, Patrick. Thank you, John. Um, tonight highlights the fantastic community spirit and volunteerism throughout the LinkedIn Brett of Kerry along with the tremendous work of our frontline workers. Thank you all, you will never be forgotten. Special thanks to the organiser of tonight's event, uh, Kerry County Council's Corporate Services and the community, community Department of Kerry County Council, along with the Community Response Forum in general. Hopefully we can all meet physically again soon. Keep up the great work, stay safe, and just before you go, I want to ask you to turn on your cameras and just give us a thumbs up. Uh, Brian there is going to do a, a screenshot. So thanks again, everyone. And I just remind you, turn on your, your um, cameras. Thanks. Thanks very much, uh, Kyle Lock. And uh, just as, uh, as uh, some closing remarks, just to bring the, the evening to a close, uh, just to add my own thanks in terms of what the Cartierac has outlined to our corporate services staff for all the work that's gone into this evening for Brian Looney, our head of digital, Brian is there on screen with the, the safe destination background. So thanks again, Brian, for all the technical background. Uh, not easy to do an event like this and to keep it flowing in that regard. And um, so again, thanks in the community section through the leadership of Nevo Sullivan and uh, Mike Scannell as the director there as well. Thanks to the mayor, uh, the Cahirlach and the elected members and each of the Cahirlach from the municipal districts, to the chief executive and the staff of Kerry County Council. And um, it's important, I think, that as we draw this evening to a close, that as many of the speakers have said, you know, things move on and times move on. Uh, but it's important that we realize that only 18 months ago, we were not using the following words in common day-to-day -day language, cocooning, social distancing, 
transmissibility, the R rate, the phrase you were on mute. I don't think we were ever using that before, you know. So it just goes to show how behaviours change and how things change very rapidly in that regard. Look, just to say we're very proud of what you have done. Uh, I want to thank also the representatives from the groups here tonight and the presenters who've spoken to you as well uh, to thank you very much for your contribution. Uh, it's important that we do recognise and that we stop and we say thanks to you for your dedication, for your duty, for your application to help your fellow Kerry citizens at what has been a most difficult time for all. Um, there is hope. There's hope with the vaccination rollout and COVID will be confined to history. But equally, what will also uh, be, be kept in mind in history is that it will rightly record what you did individually and collectively at that difficult time in that regard. As we reopen society, there will be new challenges. The responsiveness of the agencies will be called on again as we reopen. But as we've seen tonight, there'll be a collective response and we can do that. I think as mentioned by a number of speakers, we've seen a new level of decency and maybe collectively and individually, we should more often stop and say thanks. Gratitude is a huge enabler in terms of normal day-to-day -day society and saying thanks to people is, is a huge enabler. We live in and are lucky to live in a great county with great people doing great things. There's no doubt about it. And just to sign off with the words that Brendan Kennelly, uh, our poet from Kerry in his poem Begin says, that we live in a world of dreams of ending that always seems about to be given, in. Something that will not acknowledge conclusion, insists that we forever begin. And I think that's indicative of the collective spirit that's there tonight, that the Kerry community wish to forever begin, no matter what the challenge is. So I hope you've enjoyed this evening. It's important that I should have outlined at the start that this event is being streamed live on the Kerry County Council Facebook page. So hopefully we've had an audience out there who've enjoyed listening in this evening. And uh, it just remains for me to say thank you for Mahavud Galair, Behling on Shotanok, and the Sathusulgum, Winch of Tanav, us on Okhaj Shotanish. Gur Mahavud, thanks very much for your contribution, and thanks again from Kerry to Kerry for what you've done. Thank you very much. Good night, all. See you soon. Good night, Thanks everyone. Thanks everyone.